Would you believe me if I told you that a little while ago I was dead set on selling this bike? So this is my Trek Domani SL6. It is the 2021 version or the 2021 model. I've had it for about two, maybe coming up on three years right now. Overall, it's a great bike. But just a little while ago, I was saying, that's it. I got to get rid of it. It's not for me. But I recently decided to keep it since I'm coming off of a bit of a cycling hiatus. And this bike has turned into my main bike that I take when I'm going out there for longer distances. It's a carbon frame, carbon fork, carbon seat post. It came with aluminum wheels. I did put on my NB carbon wheels, carbon handlebars, full disc brakes, hydraulic disc brakes like most bikes come with nowadays. Mechanical 11-speed Ultegra. It's turning into a bit of a relic, but overall a really nice group set to have on this bike. And it has some nice creature comforts like internal storage for some extra inner tubes and a multi-tool in case you're going to puncture out on the road. Has a bit more of a relaxed geometry, can fit wider tires. You could see I normally keep a full-length fender on the back. So overall, a really decent road bike, and it looks absolutely sick in the all blacked out color. I am a sucker for all black bikes. So if the bike is so awesome, why did I want to sell it in the first place? Well, there are four main reasons. The first reason is going to be the endurance geometry. Now the endurance geometry on endurance road bikes are great for beginners or people that have never ridden a road bike before since it typically has a higher stack reach. So your handlebars are higher and it typically has a shorter reach as well. So when you get on a road racing bike, a lot of times you're really stretched out and the front end is super low. And for beginners, that's not really the greatest thing since they're not used to it. What endurance bikes typically do is they bring the handlebars closer to you and higher to you. So that way, instead of riding like this all the time, you're a little bit more upright. And overall, it's just a little bit easier to get used to that road riding position. It's nicer to your body. You're not gonna get as many neck cramps. You're not gonna get numb hands. It's overall just going to be easier to transition from riding an upright bike into a leaned over road bike. Now, when I was really riding a ton a couple of years ago, I really preferred that leaned over, stretched out flat back geometry since it just felt so much faster, snappier, it just felt so much more exciting. And every time I got on this bike, being an endurance bike, I always was just felt like it's a bit too boring, it's a bit too relaxed, it's just I'm a bit too upright. Now I have three other bikes. I have my two Wobbies and I have my Giant TCR. Those are all very classic road racing geometry, especially the Wobbies. The Wobbies are very, they're almost like track geometry. The TCR is a little bit more relaxed, but it's still very racy and that bike's a bit big. So compared to those other three bikes, this bike was always the outlier and it just didn't feel as exciting. It lacked that kick. I didn't like when you're sprinting on it uphill. It Overall, it just felt a bit dead and it didn't really feel as good when I was out riding on a super fast or super long ride. And the next thing I didn't enjoy about this bike was the weight. This is by far the heaviest road bike that I have. My TCR being 17 and a half pounds, my Wabi Classic being just at about 20 pounds, Wabi Thunder being at about 23 pounds. This bike, as it came stock, tipped the scales at around 23 and a half pounds. I've now got it down to about 21 to 22 pounds, but there is no way around this. This is by far the heaviest road bike, probably the heaviest road bike you can buy. And a lot of that has to do with the ISO speed decouplers front and rear, and it's really just designed to be more comfy, to be like a, you know, a Cadillac going down the road. It's not designed to be a super light, aero, super stiff race bike climbing up the hill. And while the weight, you really can't feel the weight, or at least I can't feel the weight when I'm actually out there riding and trying to just enjoy riding, I do feel the weight every time I have to take this bike up and down my third floor apartment here since I just typically hold it like this, put it on my shoulder and walk up and down the stairs. That's when you really start to feel the weight of a bike like this. Or if you're just lifting it up, people do that party trick saying, how light is my bike? I think that's the only reason why people actually like to have lightweight bikes. I don't really think having an extra two pounds in a bike, my opinion, doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But that was something that was always in the back of my mind saying this bike is well over 20 pounds, even with the super expensive, super nice MB carbon wheels, it's still well over 20 pounds. There's not a whole lot more you can do to make this bike super light. Reason number three I alluded to earlier in the video, but I have too many bikes. I currently have four road bikes and that doesn't count my first road bike, my first felt VR30 that I bought 
eight, nine years ago that's sitting at my mom's basement. Four active road bikes, four active bicycles that I ride. That's too many bikes. I only ride two, maybe three times a week. I'm trying to go out there at least three times a week. But even then, if I rode one bike every week, I'm still not able to ride each bike once per week. So what ends up happening is I take the one that I really enjoy the most and the other one just sits there collecting dust. So I always delegated this bike to either just sitting on the trainer or delegated it as an extra road bike. But honestly, I'm getting tired of just having collections of bikes, collections of shoes, collections of shirts. If any of you watching this normally watch more of my fashion videos, you'll know that I just got rid of two very nice pairs of dress shoes, but that's because I am tired of having 25 pairs of dress shoes, five pairs of watches, multiple cameras, four, five bikes. You can only use one thing at a time and I'm just looking to get some simplicity out of my life. And at the time, that was a big driving factor of getting rid of one bike and only having three main bicycles, three main road style bicycles. And this bike was always the odd one out, meaning that it was just the endurance model. It was dead, it was boring. It had gimmicky features like the ISO speed. It just didn't make sense and I was sure this was gonna be the one that wasn't for me. And finally, the fourth reason that I was really sure I was gonna sell this bike, endurance bikes just aren't cool. Everyone wants to ride a super lightweight aero race bike or a nice gravel bike with big knobby 650B, maybe get a bit of a one-by system there, ditch the front derailleur, wear a flannel, put some bags around. It all seemed like the race bike had a really good focus on it, as did the gravel bikes, the touring bikes. The endurance bikes were kind of somewhere in the middle, jack of all trades, master of none. So it didn't make sense for me to keep this bike since it can only go up to 38 millimeter tires, right? It can't go any wider. I could put narrow tires on it, but I can't make it feel more racy, or so I thought, and it just wasn't cool. I've never done an organized group ride, but I would not want to pull up on a Trek Domani endurance bike, especially a 22 pound one with a Brooks saddle to a fast group ride. I'd always wanna show up to a group ride with a proper race bike, giant TCR, Trek Imanda, DI2 shifting, all that stuff. So it was a bit more of that snobbish, elitist attitude I had of, Endurance bikes are for beginners. I'm an elite cyclist. I cycle all the time. No, 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 no. I need my TCR. TCR, race bikes are better in every way than endurance bikes. But if I backpedal a bit and think about why I chose this bike and not a gravel bike, I looked and thought logically how much gravel do I ride? I only ride gravel a couple of times a year. 99% of the time I'm riding on the road. Here in New York City, I have to ride an hour or more to hit the first gravel path that I can find or I have to drive. I always have to travel far to get to a gravel path. But I knew this when I bought this bike. I knew that having a gravel capable road bike made a bit more sense to me than a full on gravel bike because then to have a gravel bike with a one by drivetrain, I'm sure it would be a bit heavier, maybe even more upright. It would be a lot harder to get that road race bike feel from a gravel bike than it would be from an endurance bike, since endurance bikes are still road bikes, they're designed to be ridden on the road. So I'd rather have a gravel adjacent road bike than a road adjacent gravel bike. So what changed? Why am I now going to keep this bike and end up most likely selling my giant TCR? My beloved giant TCR that I wanted so badly for so long and it fell into my lap because it was in my local bike shop. DI2 shifting, beautiful color. Why would I downgrade to mechanical shifting Ultegra, heavier bike, two pounds heavier than my race bike? Why would I keep this bike over that bike? Well, here there are five main reasons and a lot of them actually start to mirror the reasons why I was going to get rid of it. The first reason is going to be that endurance geometry. I talked about how the endurance bike feel, it was just a bit dead, it was a bit too comfortable, a bit less inspiring. And looking back, I think that was just in my head because I was convincing myself every time I took this bike out, yeah, it was okay, but I wish it was a bit stiffer. I wish it was a bit faster. I wish it was a bit lighter. Yeah, I can really feel it's not stiff down here. No, I couldn't. If I told myself it was stiffer, it's stiff. If I told myself it wasn't stiff, it wasn't stiff. A lot of it was mind over matter for me. And now, especially with the MV3.4 SES wheels, Schwabi Pro 1, 30 millimeter tires, and just about 20 millimeters of spacers 
over the stem. I did lower the bars quite a bit. I can honestly say that this bike does feel like a race bike now, especially since these handlebars are a size 44. I measured a size 42, but I find that that extra two centimeters really makes a big difference when you're standing up, wrenching the bike back and forth. So I can honestly say that this bike does feel exciting. It does feel snappy. And with the endurance geometry, that just means that if I go through another cycling hiatus, right, because unfortunately life does not revolve around cycling. We'd all love to ride 200 miles a week, but sometimes things happen. Work happens, family stuff happens, social life happens. If you're like me, you gotta make time to make these videos. These videos don't make themselves. That's where it's beneficial to have an endurance bike where you could actually start to raise the handlebars a bit and maybe just take it easy. It's a lot more friendly if you take two or three weeks or a couple of months off the bike, raise your handlebars, just go for a couple of more rides and it's okay. So what I found with this bike is I can ride it in a more relaxed setting. I can ride a little bit slower and a little bit easier and it's easier to do that on an endurance bike, whereas a race bike, when you're all hunched over, it forces you to ride fast pretty much all the time. And you feel like you gotta be riding fast to stay comfortable. Whereas with the endurance bike, throw on a longer stem, slam the stem, put on some super lightweight aero carbon wheels since you've got disc brakes and they're not gonna be scraping away your rims. Throw on some 30 millimeter or if you want 28 millimeter tires, tubeless if you want. I prefer just the Tubalito inner tubes little orange guys right there and the bike is going to feel pretty close to a race bike and ever since i had this in my head of this bike is as fast as my tcr when i do ride my tcr yeah the tcr might be a little bit stiffer because it doesn't have the iso speed gimmicky features in it however i notice more with the tcr that i have to run the tire pressure as much lower to get the same type of vibration dampening since again here in new york city the roads can get pretty rough and it's nice to just be able to sail over the potholes, sail over all the crumps and all the bumps in the road on an endurance bike, but still have that race bike feel. The second reason why I'm keeping this bike is going to be size. My giant TCR was always a bigger bike, a longer bike. And I mentioned before, I always had to be really stretched out on that bike. Not really stretched out, but I've got a solid inch or more of reach on that bike than I do on this bike. And I always thought that the bigger size was better. But now that I actually have lowered the stem, and this is, this is the stock stem, by the way. This is a 100 millimeter stem. I can move to a 110 or 120 millimeter stem and make the bike feel bigger. But I do prefer being on the smaller bike. I should have sized down. I did get a bike fit on the TCR, but I just felt that when I was riding it, my shoulders had to pop out a little bit more. And after listening to advice from people like Bike Fit James over on Francis Cage channel, it always stuck with me of if you feel a little bit too stretched out, you are too stretched out because our human bodies, we can accommodate a lot. But once we start to feel, OK, it's a little bit too big, it actually is too big because that's at the limit of where we can accommodate and how flexible we are. So it's definitely super easy to have a smaller bike. It, it's easier to make a smaller bike bigger and you can't make a bigger bike smaller as easily plus with a smaller bike on the endurance geometry it makes the bike feel more racy more agile you can go through a slalom a bit easier where if it was a bigger size endurance bike it might be a little bit harder to actually go ahead and do that you know they're it's more like on rails it's not as easy to zip in and out of, you know, zip around a pothole. You just got to go straight through it. Reason number three is an obvious one, tire clearance. My TCR can go up to 32 millimeter tires, but this bike, the Domani, can go up to 38 millimeter tires. I'm sure you can fit 40 mil tires, no problem at all. Just do that at your own risk. I did take my TCR out on some gravel paths on 32 millimeter tires, and 32 millimeter tires can do pretty much just about any gravel except like you know hard like big rock gravel then you need a mountain bike but it just makes more sense to me now that i've decided to keep this one rather than the tcr it makes more sense that if i want to ride gravel i can put on a 35 or a 38 millimeter tire or just put on a 32 millimeter tire or even these tires the swabby pro ones and 30s i've ridden them on my tcr before and it did just fine, but it's nice to have that option of that super wide tire clearance for road bikes. It just means that this bike is a better gravel bike than 
a road race bike while being a better road bike than a full-on gravel bike. Reason number four is I'm starting to prefer the mechanical shifting over the electrical shifting. Believe it or not, I'm, I was pretty surprised about that. I was one of those people that said electric shifting all the way. There is no room for mechanical at all. But now that I've actually really been riding this bike a lot and I haven't been riding my TCR anymore, I'm always impressed. I'm more impressed with the quality and the crispness, crisp, crispness, not Christmas. I'm always impressed with how crisp the shifts are on this bike. Maybe it's because I don't expect much from the mechanical system. I'm like, it's mechanical, it shifts, who cares? But the front derailleur, the shifts in front always feel awesome. The shifts in back, bang, 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 you're banging right through it. Honestly, it's all that we really need, but electric shifting is nice. There's a lot of upsides for electric shifting, but a lot of downsides to electric shifting as well. Now, I will be honest, if this bike had Shimano Di2, I, I would be in love with this bike more than I am right now. It would be truly maintenance free. It would be like, yep, no contest. That's the one thing if I was gonna buy a Domani today, I'd probably get the 105 Di2 because the current 2023, 2024 model Trek Domani SL6 removes the front ISO speed and has the Shimano Di2 105, which is wireless shifters. So you don't have all those wires running through the handlebars. Absolutely beautiful. That's probably what I would go for, but the mechanical Ultegra totally fine as well. And reason number five is the bike just feels hardier, sturdier, stronger than the TCR. I'm not a huge fan of carbon bikes. I always felt like the professionals are riding them. So we're all seeing carbon fiber road bikes in bike shops. And you have to be really careful when you're clamping the top tube and putting it in a bike stand. And based on the research I've done with carbon fiber for bike materials, it's very strong, probably the strongest structurally. So if you're a heavy rider and you're sitting on double diamond system, which is like a big truss, it's going to be able to hold a lot more weight without failing. But it does not like impact, right? So don't hit it with a hammer. If you're locking up constantly, let's say in the city, I would not get carbon fiber for that. You also have to be careful if you place it in your car and something else gets placed on top of it, doesn't like that, it might get cracked. And unfortunately, that's the biggest downside for me with carbon fiber. Now a bike with a giant TCR being a race bike is designed to be more lightweight. So that's that classic lightweight carbon fiber. And it just makes sense to me that the more material you take away from an item to make it super light, the less impact resistance you're gonna have, less strength you're gonna have. So the TCR, I've never had a problem riding that bike. I've always felt safe riding on that bike, even though it's carbon. I do feel safer on this bike. It just feels hardier since it's a good two pounds heavier on the frame. And then little things, it came with the aluminum wheels. It came with aluminum handlebars. It overall just feels like a more hardier, better built bike for everyday riding, whereas a uh, full carbon, lightweight road racing bike, giant TCR, Trek Amanda, is gonna be great for racing up a hill. It's gonna be super aero, but you have to be a lot more delicate with it. So those were the main four reasons of why I was going to sell the bike, and those are the main five reasons of why I've decided to keep the bike. Now there are a couple of downsides, just like anything in life, but there are two major downsides to this bike. Number one is going to be the weight, it's never gonna be a super light race bike. It's never gonna be a super light road bike. The only time this really matters is carrying it up and down stairs. And number two is going to be the mechanical shifting. I do know at one point, I'm gonna to have to replace this rear derailleur shifting cable. Otherwise, the Ultegra STI shifter is going to start fraying it after a couple thousand miles. So it's almost like a ticking time bomb in there. Those are the two major downsides. Also, the, the ISO speed on the back, it's starting to creak, whatever. It doesn't really bother me. I haven't gotten around to lubric lubricating it yet. But everything else about the bike, it's just easier to live with. It's hardier. It's easier to ride over rough roads. It can do gravel. It can go fast. It's more upright in case you're, you know, maybe your neck isn't as flexible. Maybe you're just getting into it. It's just overall a better bike for where I am right now. And ever since I've decided to keep this bike and sell the TCR, it just makes more sense. Whereas when I was gonna get rid of this bike and sell the TCR, I kept trying to tell myself, you don't need a gravel bike, right? You could ride gravel on a road bike, right? This bike is my size, right? This bike is smooth, right? I was always second guessing myself. With this bike, I'm not second guessing anything. It's smooth. It's just overall a better bike for me at this point. And best of all, this bike looks absolutely sick in all black. Thanks for watching.